everyone. I'm Samiha with Fresh Approach, and today we'll be talking about how to reduce your in-home food waste. These classes are brought to you in partnership by Leah's Pantry, Fresh Approach, and the San Mateo County Office of Sustainability. Last week, Anna from Leah's Pantry posted a video on their Instagram about the different methods of food waste, where it's coming from, and how to reduce that. Um, and today we'll be talking a little bit more about how to reduce your in-home food waste. And I have some good news. So for residents of San Mateo County that are watching the entire video, you are still el eligible to get $6 worth of these VeggieRx coupons. Um, these VeggieRx coupons can be used at a variety of different farmers markets. They're listed out here on the back um, and they never expire. So I know a lot of the farmers markets are, out, are closed down right now, but these vouchers never expire. We'll also be sending you a voucher guide of where you can um, use these markets near your area. Um, and they can only be used for fresh fruits and vegetables. So to get these vouchers, all you have to do is go to the link in our Instagram bio and fill out the survey and we'll be sending every person $6 worth of vouchers. So um, if, every, if someone watches the video, you have to fill out the survey to get these vouchers if you're a resident of San Mateo County. And it's $6 per person that fills out the survey. Okay, so last week Anna spoke to us about different methods of food waste. And there were four different kind of systems that are producing food waste. So I'll give you just a few seconds to see if you can recall those four systems that are reducing or producing food waste. Okay, let's see if you got them all. So the different systems that kind of produce food waste are food processors, so we're talking about things like factories, larger industrial factories there, farms, lots of some farms have um, produce that might go to waste, businesses, so things like grocery stores and restaurants, food retailers, and then the last one is our in-home food waste, and that's what we'll be talking about through these videos. So we have here a simple activity that you can do at home um, and it shouldn't take very long. It's just my top five produce items. So you can go um, through the five most used produce items you have in your home, the five top used fruits and vegetables in your home. What parts of that fruit or vegetable get thrown out? And then how will we avoid this waste? So for example, we have broccoli. The parts of broccoli that usually get thrown out might be the stem, the leaves, um, parts that are yellow, parts that are about to go bad, um, and the broccoli flowers. So, different ways that you can use these parts of the broccoli. Well, I have a head of broccoli right here. So you can actually cook the stem. Um, if you peel the stem, you can just peel it and cook it like you would with broccoli. Same with the leaves. You can eat the broccoli leaves. Um, you might want to cook them. They're a little bit tougher. You can, and you can also, you know, this is just the head of the broccoli stem, but you can actually use the entire stem, just peel it. Um, the flowers, if you buy a head of broccoli and it has yellow flowers, those are also still edible. So you can cook those and eat those. Um, parts that are about to go bad but haven't started rotting, you can put those in the freezer and throw them into a veggie stock. And later on in this video, I'll show you how to make a vegetable stock. Um, and parts that are already rotting, you can put in the compost. And if you have a space like in your backyard or a garden or anything, you can compost that in your backyard. So let's say you buy a head of broccoli or you buy some broccoli and you find that you didn't use most of it within a week. Some things you can do are adjust the amount of broccoli that you buy, maybe just buy a little bit of less broccoli, or you can chop up the broccoli, throw it in the freezer, and so now you have something that's ready to go and that you didn't waste. So when you come home, you can just pull the broccoli out of the freezer, cook it up, and it'll last there for a few months instead of just, you know, a week or two. Okay, some other ways that you can stretch your produce. Um, washing your produce with a little bit of vinegar. You generally want a three-part water to a one-part vinegar wash. 
Some studies have shown that that can elongate the produce life, um, storing them properly. So making sure they're just stored properly in the fridge, um, different, you know, some different items like herbs. You want to make sure your herbs are stored properly. Generally, you want your herbs to be stored in kind of a glass, like a vase. Um, you can also put a wet paper towel, a moist paper towel around things like cilantro, dill, parsley, and put it in the fridge. Or you can put them in a vase and clean out, rinse out the water every day. And later on in this video, I'll also show you how to grow food from kitchen scraps. You can also scrub and wash your produce instead of peeling it. So for things like carrots, beets, potatoes, um, zucchini, whatever it is, instead of throwing out those peels, you can just scrub and wash away the dirt and still use those peels because they have a lot of nutrients in them. You can also use things that are about to go bad, like carrots, beets, zucchini, sweet potatoes. Those are all really great items that you can grate and throw into things like bread, um, pancakes, muffins, different things that it'll help bring out a little bit of sweetness in the product and it is going to be more nutritious, it'll have more fiber, some more vitamins, and you're not throwing out your vegetable. All right, so now I will show you how to make a vegetable stock and then we'll show you how to grow some food from scraps. So a basic vegetable stock is a really great way to utilize the ends and the scraps of vegetables that you might not normally eat. Um, it's a great way to utilize vegetables that you might not be able to get to before they go bad. And it's also really great to have on hand just when you, you know, need a quick meal. It's really nutrient dense and you can use it for a variety of different things, which I'll talk about at the end of this video. So first, I'll go over what you want to put in your vegetable stock and then I'll show the process of it and then I'll talk about storage and what it can be used for. So when you're making a vegetable stock, you can use all kinds of scraps, for example, the stems of broccoli, um, the peels of onion, the peels of garlic, carrot tops, beet tops, um, le cauliflower leaves. You can use produce that you know you're not going to be able to eat before it goes bad. And yeah, just a bunch of different scraps or the butts of vegetables that you wouldn't normally eat, but you want to find a good use for them. Vegetable stock is a really great way to reduce food waste because you're saving the produce that you would normally either throw out or compost and you're going to be getting all of the nutrients from those vegetables and from the skins and peels because as some of us, we might know that a lot of the peels and the skins of vegetables carry a lot of nutrients and when we're composting them, well, we're not getting the nutrients, you know, our gardens might be, but we want to make sure that we can use those nutrients somehow. Okay, so when you're making a vegetable stock, you don't want to use produce that has already gone bad. Um, you don't want to use produce that has mold on it. You don't want to use things that just don't, that aren't healthy, that you wouldn't eat anyways. So you want to make sure you're still using things that are okay to eat, but um, you know, they might be on the softer end. They might be about to be going bad, but they're definitely still okay. You wanna make sure you're not using things that have mold on them. Um, just make sure you're not using things that have already rot rotted. And you also wanna make sure that within your vegetable scraps that there's no like rubber bands, stickers, nothing like that, just the produce and some basics. Basically, we have a few main base ingredients and then vegetable scraps. So here are the base ingredients. Um, this is just a couple of onions, red onions and garlic. This is green garlic that's chopped up. This is just stalks of celery. There are about three stalks of celery in this, maybe four. Um, and this celery was something that was about to go bad. I knew I wasn't gonna be able to use it to cook. So I decided to just use it in a vegetable stock. And then we have just a few carrots. Um, I have a lot of vegetable scraps and some of them are carrots. So I'm only using, this was about three small carrots. You'd wanna use maybe a little bit more if you want just to fill it up. And then we'll use a splash of olive oil or another type of oil just so it doesn't burn. And then a little bit of apple cider vinegar as well. Um, and that's just to bring out some of the more nutrients. And then I have here um, just the vegetable scraps. So this is just everything that I've put into a bag and I've thrown into the freezer and I've let it freeze for a little while. 
and then I've put it back. And we're gonna make vegetable stock. I'm making two, oops, sorry, two batches of it. <laughs> okay, let me just clean that up. Okay, and so again, these are, it's a great way if you have a bunch of vegetable scraps, you can just throw them into the freezer in a bag. I normally keep a bag in the freezer and anything that we wanna make into vegetable stock, we just put it back in there. Or if there's produce that is about to go bad, we just put it right back into the freezer as well. So I'm just going to add these ingredients into the pot. And I'll split it in half. Um, and I would say that these two pots are probably going to make, it's kind of a rough guess, but might make about three of these large ball jars. And these are about six cups. Um, or three pints, so it might make nine pints or 18 cups in total. Again, that's kind of a rough guess. <laughs> okay. Just add all these ingredients in here. Here goes the celery. And the carrots. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're leaving um, a bit of space at the top of your pot. This is a little bit tight, to be honest. It's, I would say you want to make it, you know, three-fourths vegetable scraps, maybe up to here, and then leave space for some water. And I'm just going to pour water into this right now. And what you want to do is fill it to the top with water. You can also do half vegetable scraps and half water. You can do, like I just said, three-fourths vegetable scraps, one-fourth water. It just really depends. And of course, because this is frozen, it's going to like make a lot more space in the pot. So I'll fill these with water, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I filled both of my pots um, almost up to the top with water. I, of course, left a little bit room for if anything's going to spill over. Um, and I forgot to mention that if you have any herbs, like a couple of bay leaves, you can go ahead and throw those in there. Um, or if you have rosemary as well, you can throw those in there. Um, and so now I'm just going to add a splash of olive oil so it doesn't burn. And then just a splash of apple cider vinegar to kind of bring out some more of the nutrients. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, so now I'm going to put this on the stove and I will bring it to a boil for about 20 minutes. Like not, you know, you can bring it to a boil, leave it for about 20 minutes, and then you want to lower it. Simmer it for at least um, an hour, so lower it to low to mid heat and let it simmer for at least an hour. I sometimes let it simmer for a couple of hours on very low heat, and then you can just leave it in the pot and I'll show you how to drain it. Let the veggie stock, it's ready. Um, I let it boil for about 20 minutes and then I just let it simmer on the stove for about two hours, and so now we're just going to strain it. Um, and all you have to do to strain it is get a strainer and put it over a pot. And I like to do this in the sink. And yeah, you just pour it through the pot. And it's going to be pretty hot. So let me grab a towel. And then we're just going to funnel it into a jar. Okay, so I've now poured all of the vegetable stock into this jar. Um, that large pot made about 12 cups, so about two of these large jars. This is a glass jar. And you can store your vegetable stock in glass. You can put it in plastic um, in Ziploc bags if you're wanting to freeze it. If you're putting it in a plastic container, you're going to want to let it cool before you transfer it. Um, and you can store it in your fridge for, I would say, five days to a week, potentially longer, but you want to be safe. And if you want to stretch that out, you can store it in the freezer um, for up to like five months, maybe even longer. If you're storing it in the freezer, you want to make sure you're leaving space at the top because the liquid will expand when it freezes and you don't want to crack any glass or plastic. Um, and you can use your vegetable stock for a variety of different uses. You can use it to cook rice, lentils, beans, quinoa. You can use it as a base for soups, 
Um, you can use it to cook meat. You can use it for just a hot drink if you need, you know, a nice nourishing drink. Um, and it's a really great way to reduce food waste and make sure that you're getting a lot of the extra nutrients that you might be throwing out. So I'm going to store this and I'm going to use this for some beans later today. Hello everyone, my name is Samiha and I'm here with Fresh Approach and I'll be showing you how to regrow food and vegetables from kitchen scraps. So you can do this with a variety of different vegetables and produce and I'll be showing you different options today. Um, and the basic method is the same, that you cut off the bottom part and place it in either soil or just water. Um, if you have soil, it'll be a little bit better because it has more nutrients, but all of the options I'm showing you today can be started in water and then either transplanted into soil or just used from the water. So the first one I'll be showing you is green onions. So this is a bunch of green onions that I bought at the farmer's market like this week. And um, this is one that I've bought last week and that I've planted in this water. And all you have to do is once you've used, you know, the green part of the onions is just put the bulb in water. So you just place this part with the little root in a jar of water and you want to change out this water about every day or every other day. Or again, you can plant this directly in soil. You can do this with leeks and with scallions as well, like this. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is the celery. So this is just the bottom um, of the celery. I've just chopped off the um, celery sticks, the stalks, and this is just the bottom, the base of it. All you have to do is place this in a bowl of water again, um, put it somewhere sunny inside your house, so on a windowsill that might receive more sun, change out the water every other day, and then in about a week you'll maybe hopefully start to see some growth and that then you can transplant it to soil directly. Or you can just transplant this bottom part into a little bit of soil directly. Okay, we have bok choy. This is very similar to celery. You'll just put the celery in, or I'm sorry, you'll just put the bok choy in a bowl of water, um, place it somewhere sunny, and then in about a week, you can try to transplant it into some soil and you'll see some new growth, some new green growth. Let's see. We have some carrot greens here. So this, these are carrot greens, carrot tops. Um, all you have to do to transplant or to regrow carrot greens is cut off the top part of the carrot and make sure it has a little bit of the carrot itself and that um, the greens is intact. And then you can place this in some water. Again, put it somewhere sunny for a few days um, and then transplant it to soil. Or you can place this directly in the soil. So this won't regrow the carrot itself, but this will grow the carrot greens, and you can use those in soups, um, in veggie stocks, and salads, lots of different things. You can also do that with beet greens and with some other vegetable greens. Let's see, we have here some cabbage. Um, so this is just the bottom part of the cabbage. It's cut in half, <laughs> but it's still the bottom, the base of the cabbage. And again, I just put that in water, in a bowl of water. Um, you'll want to place this somewhere sunny inside your house and replace the water every day or every other day. Um, and then you'll want to transplant this cabbage into some soil once you start to kind of see uh, new roots and new leaves appear. And it'll probably be about a week or so. Again, you can start these all off directly in soil and that might be, you'll see a little bit of growth that's faster or more robust. Okay, and I have potatoes here. So this is just a little container of soil that I have. The potatoes, if you have any potatoes that are growing eyes um, or that have sprouts from their eyes, let's see if that'll focus. You can see here that this has some, it's sprouted and I just cut off the part of the eye and then put it in a little pot and of soil and you'll want to cover this with like a couple inches of soil um, yeah and it'll start growing some new growth from this here okay and the last one I have here is um, lemongrass 
So lemongrass is great for tea, for soups, for cooking in rice. It's like bay leaves where you don't want to eat the lemongrass itself, but you can use it to flavor things. Um, I took my lemongrass and I put it directly into the soil and I have a large bush growing right now that I can show you. So all you have to do is take this part, you'll see where it's below the node, um, it's cut, and then you just stick it in soil and it'll grow. Or you can even put this in water. Um, like most other things, you can put this in water and just let it sit by a windowsill somewhere sunny and then change the water every couple of days and then transplant it when you see some new growth. And you Okay, so here's a great example of a lemongrass that I bought at a market and just planted directly into the soil. Um, normally they grow a little bit taller if they're not cut down. We've trimmed this one down just um, so other plants can have a bit of space. But this is a great example of just, I just took a lemongrass. This is a stock that I got from the market. You just stick this part, the node, directly into soil and it will grow. Um, you can use lemongrass in things like tea, soups, to cook rice. You just don't want to eat the leaves itself. Okay, if you have any other questions, comments, ideas, or suggestions, please let us know and write a comment down below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Bye.